God bless once again. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9, verse 27, John 3, 16. Shooting the second part of what's your legacy like? What would they say at your eulogy? I'm down in Parliament Square viewing the statue of Nelson Mandela. For some, he's a hero. Was labelled as a, as, as a terrorist by some, but a revolutionary and a freedom fighter fighting against apartheid. He's passed on now, and it's now that we can take time to reflect and ponder and ask, what will your legacy be like? Mandela, regardless of how we might revere him, is still just a man. And the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Although he was a brilliant man and his people were put into injustice under apartheid, I can't help thinking and ask the question, before he died, did he truly know the Lord? But at the same time, I have great respect and admiration for what he achieved and what he stood for. But none of that will really matter on the Day of Judgment because the Bible says unless we know the Lord, unless his righteousness and his blood is over the doorposts of our life, we will be judged in sin. I'm going to walk on. So, why am I asking the question, what's your legacy like? What will your eulogy be like? Because I've been to many funerals where people have died that I know. And sometimes a pastor has to read out, or a priest, a eulogy for them in a service. And we truly question and ask as they're reading the eulogy, you know, what that person was like. You know, did they truly live a righteous life? I've listened to some eulogies where some people have turned around and said, or, or you know, pastors or family members, he was a good guy. He loved his children. He had plans of doing this and plans of doing that. But the truth of the matter is in many cases, some of those individuals would, were sinners and their eulogy didn't even match up to what was read. Now the Bible says in the book of John 3, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And it also says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Some of these people down here, they have legacies that are great in some areas, but there were other areas of their life that were dark. They never knew the love of God or to truly turn and repent and give it to Christ. Some of them have done good works, but the Bible says that our works are like filthy rags. You know, some people that are down here, essentially their legacy is just built off of their ego, their pride, but some genuinely did have care and commitment to the rest of the world. This is Ian Christian Smuts. Supposed to have fought in the Boer War, but was also an advocate early on for racial segregation in South Africa. His views afterwards changed to him understanding that segregation uh, wasn't uh, completely possible, but he still held very prejudiced views. But on one hand, he helped to establish the League of Nations, which was supposed to be a foundation for world peace. But was that true righteousness? Was it the same righteousness of God and Christ? I don't think it was. But only the Lord knows what happens when he died. Did he get a chance on his deathbed to repent and seek the Lord and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? 
were all his sins placed on Christ? Did Ian Christian Smuts die a Christian? This is what we have to ask. What will your legacy be like? What will your, be, your life be like when you're called to stand in front of God on Judgment Day? Hebrews 9 verse 27 says, For it's appointed for man to die once, and after that comes a judgment. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God bless Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16.